the Spotlight Guide to Video Editing. In this video, we're going to show you the very basics that you need to know in order to start editing video. We're going to show you how to isolate the bits of the footage you want to use, how to join the videos together, how to fade in and fade out, adjust the audio volume on your clips, add a title card, some of the basic shortcut keys that are used in video editing applications, and how to export your edit as a video file for upload to the internet. These skills can be used for editing together self-tapes, doing basic showreels, and could even get you started on editing your own short film. The tools that we're going to use work in a very similar way in applications such as Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere, and even iMovie, but today we're going to be using DaVinci Resolve because it's professional, uh, works on Mac and PC and even Linux, and it's free, which is pretty awesome, not to mention we think it's really, really good. We are going to be editing together the Iden and the scene in a self-tape. Willis, who works at Spotlight, has very kindly filmed a self-tape for us to edit with in our studio in London. Cool. Firstly, you need to install DaVinci Resolve on your computer. On a Mac, it is available in the App Store, but it can also be found by going to www.blackmagicdesign.com and then looking for the products page, and uh, then you look for DaVinci Resolve and Fusion software. Then look for the free version. Download it and install it in the way that you usually would on your computer. When you first start up DaVinci Resolve, you arrive to the Project Manager page in which you need to make the project. Click on the New Project button and type in the name of the project you want to create. You then arrive at this window and if you look at the bottom of the screen, there are a load of tabs Media, Cut, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight and Deliver. Now it may look daunting, but for this video we're only going to look at Edit and Deliver as they contain everything that you need to get started. If we go to the Edit tab, you come to the Edit page. The first part of the page that we're going to look at is the media pool in the top left hand corner. This is where all of the video files that you want to edit live. In order to get some video files into the media pool, you can either right click or control click over it and select import media. Or you can go to file, import media, then navigate to the video files you want to work with and click open. Firstly, it would usually ask you this, if you want to match the project frame rate to the video file. If the project is running at a different frame rate to the video file, it could cause your computer to get a bit slower and could affect the quality of the video. So click change. This will bring the video footage into the software. It normally displays it as thumbnails. However, you can get it to display a list if you prefer. Double clicking on one of these videos will open it in the media viewer. Now this is when you need to select the bit of the video that you want to edit with. As we're editing together clips from a self tape, the first clip is the ident and we only want the bit of the video in which he says his name and agent. You can navigate through the video either by clicking on this progress bar just below the video or using the buttons just below. They're a bit like the buttons on your DVD player. You have a button to skip to the beginning of the clip, one to play the clip backwards, a stop button, a button to play the video forwards, and a button to skip to the end. You can also use keys on your keyboard to control these buttons too. The space bar is the shortcut to play and pause. And for these buttons, the shortcuts are the home, J, K, L, and end keys. Let's play through the video to find the moment just before Willis starts to speak, as that's where we wanted to start. Once you've found it, you set what's called an in point. You do this either by pressing the I key on the keyboard or by pressing this button. Hi, my name is Willis Bates and I'm with Spotlight. At the point of the video where you want it to end, you set what's called the out point, either by pressing O on the keyboard or by clicking this button. You may notice that the part of the video that you've selected has gone to a slightly lighter shade of gray here. Next, you want to put the video onto the window below, the timeline. The timeline is the place on which you construct your edit. The far left is the start of the video and it progresses in time the further right you go. Let's drag the video from the media viewer onto it and see how that works. Firstly, it will create a new video and audio track on the timeline and also add the timeline it has just made into the media pool alongside your footage. Just above the timeline, you've got all of your tools. 
Uh, today, the only ones we're going to look at are the selector tool and the zoom in, zoom out tool. The selector tool allows you to do all of the edits that we need to do today. And the zoom in, zoom out tool allows you to zoom in or zoom out on a part of the timeline for more precise editing. This orangey red line is what's called the playhead. Whatever is underneath is what displays on the timeline viewer. To the left of the timeline are the tools for the video and audio track. You can do things like hide and mute the tracks, but we're not going to worry about any of those today. We are going to expand the audio track by clicking on it at the bottom and pulling it down, which will allow you to see a visualization of the audio in what's called a waveform. We'll need this later on. Firstly, we need to check the in and out points of the video. You can trim or add video to what you've chosen by hovering your mouse over the end of the video. And when you get this symbol, you can pull the video out or trim it in. If you want to add video at the beginning of the timeline, you will need to move the video forward to allow enough space. Hi, my name is Willis Bates and I'm with Spotlight. Once you are happy with that, we're going to add a fade in and a fade out to the video. You do this by hovering your mouse over the beginning of the video, grabbing these toggles and pulling them into the video. The numbers that come up refer to seconds and frames. This video was recorded at 25 frames per second. So if we pull the toggle to 12 frames, it'll fade in for just under half a second. But you can make it as long or as short as you feel is right. You can use the same tool on the audio. However, you need to have the audio track expanded as we did earlier on. Do this again at the end of the clip and your video will fade in at the beginning and out again at the end. Hi, my name is Willis Bates and I'm with Spotlight. Next, we want to add the scene after the ident. Let's do all of that again and add it to the timeline as we've just done. Open it up in the media viewer, set the in and out points, drag it onto the timeline, fade in and fade out and see how that looks. Hi, my name is Willis Bates and I'm with Spotlight. Do you like crisps? I used to like them. As you may notice from the waveform, the audio in the scene is slightly quieter than the audio in the ident. Therefore, it would be a good idea to increase the volume on that clip. To do this, hover your mouse cursor over the thin line running through the waveform of the audio that you wish to change, click on it and drag it upwards to make it louder and downwards to make it quieter. You want to make sure that it is loud, but not too loud. The peaks of the waveform should not hit the top of the track. If they do, it could cause it to distort in the final edit. Next, let's add a title card to the beginning of the video. In order to do this, you need to make space at the beginning of the timeline. Select all of the video clips and drag them along until you have a bit of space. Then go to the left hand window of the screen. This is your toolbox. It contains all of the video, audio, filters and effects that you could ever possibly want. We only want a title today, so look for titles, then drag the text effect onto the beginning of the timeline. On the top right hand side of the page is the inspector, which will give you all of the tools you need to edit the text. Type in the title you want to appear on the screen into this box, and you can change things like the font, font size, position, and so forth from the tools below. Once you're happy with the text, let's shorten the duration of the title. It'll usually default to five seconds in length, but that may feel too long for a self tape. So let's make it three seconds. We can then add a fade in and a fade out as we did on the video clips. Next, you want to close the gap between the title and the video clip. All of this space is time. So the larger the gap between the title and the clips, the longer the time it will take before the video fades in and you'll just have a blank screen. You can either do this by highlighting all of the videos and dragging them back, or you can simply click in the gap, right click, select ripple delete, and it will close the gap. It may be a nice idea, however, to have a moment of blank screen after the title and before the video, just so that it doesn't jump too quickly into the video. In order to do this, highlight the video and open the gap a little bit. Remember 25 frames is a second in this project. So let's make it 12 frames, just under half a second. And that'll give the viewer a bit of what we call breathing space. Let's do that in between the ident and the scene too. 
Now it's probably time to watch back the whole thing and see if we're happy with the edit before we export it into a video file that you can upload. Hi, my name is Willis Bates and I'm with Spotlight. Do you like crisps? I used to like them. I was always partial to a bag of smoky bacon. Once you're happy with the edit, uh, it's time to export the video file into a format that you can upload to the internet. You do this by going to the Deliver tab. In the Deliver tab, we will export the edit that we have just done as a single video file. Sometimes this is called encoding, sometimes rendering, sometimes exporting. They all essentially mean the same thing, so don't worry too much about that. It looks quite similar to the Edit tab, but in the top left hand corner you have all of your video encoder settings. This might look very confusing, but worry not, help is at hand in the form of the presets at the top of the window. You may see a few different options if you're using a PC, but on all computers you will see the YouTube, Vimeo and Twitter options. Any of these would be suitable for uploading your video to the internet, but let's select the YouTube one. Next, you'll need to give it a file name. As we've been editing a self-tape for Willis, we'll call it Willis Bates Project Roll. If you're recording a real self-tape, we would actually use the name of the real project and the role that he was auditioning for. Next, you need to set the destination, the place that the file will be saved to. We're just going to keep it on the desktop because why not? Now is a good time to click the Save button, either by clicking Control or Command S or by going to File, then Save. Once you have saved, click the Add to Render Queue button at the bottom of the window and it will send it to the right-hand window of the screen, the Render Queue. The render queue is set up so that you can send multiple exports to it at once, then set them all to go automatically, one after the other, whilst you go off and do something else. But all you need to do is click the Render All button at the bottom of the screen to get it going. Rendering can take quite a long time depending on how powerful your computer is, so pop the kettle on, or if you're on a computer that's really slow, perhaps even run a bath whilst it does its thing. When it's finished, you will have saved the video file to the desktop or wherever you saved it to. It's a good idea to watch it back just to make sure that there aren't any problems. And that's it. You've edited a video and saved it to your computer. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comments section below so that everyone can see the answer. Thank you for watching.